Hi, Jesse again. I hope you don't mind seeing my like actual face again. <laughs> As artists, we do a lot of sitting and shrimping and cramping, whether that be our backs or our, our wrists. In fact, I did so much shrimping and lying on my side on my bed as a child that now I have borderline scoliosis. I've had multiple trips to the ER, haven't been able to stand upright for like years, um, have had to take weeks off of school and work. It's it's not great, really. You ever had to like stay up until like 3 a.m. because you were hallucinating from how much pain you were having for hours on end? It's not great, really. Sit up straight right now. I know you're slouching. Because of this, I figured it'd be good to share some tips and tricks that I learned from my chiropractor <laughs> um, about what things you should do to have a healthier and more ergonomic lifestyle as an artist. This is pretty different compared to the like art tutorials that we usually do on this channel. So if you actually like content like this, uh, please let us know as a comment down below. The first thing that we should watch for is posture. Posture. I know you're shrimping right now. Come on, sit back up. I know you can do it. There you go. We have a desk, we shrimp at it, right? Shrimp, you don't know, shrimp posture. It's the one where you just kinda, <laughs> you ever seen a shrimp? <laughs> you know, you're shrimping, you're curving your back that direction. Well, I know we all shrimp, but we should still watch it. It's a very, very common part of artist culture, but we should still watch our posture um, to make sure that we are not constantly bending our backs over. Set at a 90 degree angle. You want so many 90 degree angles in your body, it's crazy. So you wanna make sure that when you are sitting on your chair, your back is angled at 90 degrees to your legs, your knees, should also be at 90 degrees to the ground. Your feet should be flat on the ground so that you have a 90 degree angle at your ankles. Your elbows should be at your side, 90 degrees. Hands on your desk, 90 degrees. Everything should be at 90 degrees. When you are sitting at a desk, that's how you do like true ergonomics. Like it's, it's amazing how many right angles you need. Working areas should also be directly at eye level. If you are looking up, if you're looking down, you are craning your neck and you're stressing out your neck muscles. So they should be at eye level, especially if you have your monitors in front of you. They should be at eye level to the rest of your body. Books can be a temporary solution if you like, you know, if your monitors are a little too low, a little too high. Actually, if they're a little too low, you should put books underneath them to make them higher. But that is like a temporary solution. You should probably use like monitor stands. Monitor stands are better and a more permanent solution. Definitely more stable, right? Books don't feel like they can slide off of each other all the time. Books can be a temporary solution, but monitor stands are better to get. You can also get monitor arms. Monitor arms are nice. I've been meaning to install a monitor arm on my desk. We have one in the basement. I keep forgetting to do it. You can use a monitor arm, clamp it onto your desk, and you can have both of your monitors on it so you can just adjust its height at any point, adjust the direction of the monitors, just if they're looking down or looking up it's a lot better to have those more permanent ergonomic solutions by comparison to like a very very weak structure you know another thing you should do is to get up and walk every 20 to 30 minutes get up and walk get up move do something right you shouldn't sit in the same place for way too long because that you know not great for your back you're training your body to be staying in that singular position and make sure that your hips aren't also angled to the side so your weight should be equal on both sides of your pelvis right we might not even notice it you might not even notice it you think you're sitting at 90 degrees but if you're sitting at 90 degrees and one side of your hips is just angled slightly upward right that's also bad for your back because you are angling your lumbar to one direction your lumbar spine that is the most common spine spinal portion that like artists or office workers or everything like hurt because that is your lower back I assume if you're watching this video your back hurts right now so <laughs> standing is a lot better uh, especially if you sit at a desk all day for work which leads to the next point actually number two equipment I know, you don't want me talking about this one. Nobody does because that means you have to spend money. I know you don't want to spend money, but don't worry. Ergonomic equipment doesn't actually have to be super, super pricey. Uh, just make sure that you are measuring for you. My original desk was an Ikea desk didn't cost me more than like 150 bucks. Office chairs are both cheaper and better for your back than a gaming chair. I know, I know you want the really aesthetic gamer chair. You want it to light up. You want it to be made of pleather, right? It's actually not great for your back, okay? They'll say they have lumbar support, but they're really, really not great. An office chair, 20 times better for your back. Stools tend to be fine for painters, but something with lower back support or lumbar support is better for you, uh, especially if you have bad back 
discipline if you're somebody who leans, somebody who's cross-legged, somebody who leans forward, right? Somebody who shrimps. If you have bad back discipline, a stool, not amazing for you because you have no gauge of what's too far forward and what's too far back. So if you have a good sitting like chair, an office chair, it'll probably have lumbar support and it'll be really good for your entire body. An office chair is pretty important to have as like a good high quality item. That's the number one thing you shouldn't cheap out on. It's your chair because your back, you're going to need that your entire life. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you're sitting at a desk or if you're walking, your back is important. So it might actually be better to get a chair new by comparison to use just because like, you know, if you're getting it used, there's probably already stuff wrong with the chair. It might be loose, might be wobbly, might not be great for your back. The padding might be worn out. There's lots of different factors that could change what makes this chair good and what makes this chair bad. So it might actually be better just to get it completely new. But eventually, right, you can start off with like a nice cheapo office chair. It doesn't have to be like super, super expensive, but you shouldn't like so cheap out on it to the point where it just doesn't work anymore. You could start off with maybe like a $300 one, right? $200, something like that. But then later on in li like, just like you deciding to get a tablet, you can change it out and make it a little bit better, get something better. I have a Herman Miller that is like the office chair. <laughs> It is the office chair. Eventually you can get something that is like much, much nicer, much better for your back. But even like a nice office chair doesn't have to cost more than $200. For my lovely traditional artists, easels also come with adjustable heights. You should probably look for an easel with an adjustable height so that your neck doesn't have to crane just like our monitors for us digital artists. So you can move your piece up and down to make sure that it is eye level with you. It's also better practice to make sure that there's no distortion in your work, right? If you're working directly eye level, that means that your piece probably looks perfectly fine eye level as well. So make sure that you are looking completely eye level to your piece, adjusting the height. If you don't use an easel, if you are more of like a, a sketcher, if you have like ink, dip pen, stuff like that, I would actually recommend that you get an architect's table. I have one downstairs. That one you can adjust it so we can actually angle upwards towards you. Architects use it so that they can look directly at their piece instead of having to crane their neck over a desk that doesn't arch upwards. You can get little plein air ones as well that are like a little bit, I don't know, look much cheaper <laughs> than a proper architect's desk. But having a, you know, working space that has an adjustable angle to the surface you're working on, very, very nice. Much, much better for your ergonomics. You know what's even better? And then a desk that is just perfectly measured for us. That's right. It's a standing desk. Speaking of, Flexispot just sent us a standing desk. My original desk was pretty small and with someone who has a bad back, I was long overdue for not only a larger desk, but for a standing one as well. When the box came in for the desk, I was super excited. I haven't changed my setup for like three years. It was actually super easy to install too. I had an Ikea desk and this desk had an easier to follow instruction set than theirs. It almost felt like putting together Legos. And now this is what my new workspace looks like. The desk is sleek and super convenient to use. Being able to set heights in the electronic pad is super useful. I chose this colorway and size because of my available space and to match my other furniture, but there are lots of other sizes and colors to choose from. As someone with wireless headphones, being able to plug my headset directly into the desk to let them charge is more convenient than you'll ever know. Not only are there two USB ports, there's also a USB-C port to charge phones or other compatible devices. Even with a super sleek design, they were still able to fit a desk drawer to fit some of my desktop necessities and small keepsakes in there. Their desks are highly rated on Amazon and it's no wonder why. This desk is sturdy and efficient, being able to switch from sitting to standing in seconds with the press of a button. I also have little cousins that come over sometimes and love to go through my stuff. Luckily, there's a child lock so that their sticky little fingers can't adjust the height at random. You can get this standing desk in a variety of styles and save an additional 5% off store-wide using the promo code and link in the description. Thank you so much FlexiSwap for sponsoring this video. Join a virtual class to learn live from our professional artists, get creative assignments, individual guidance, and real-time feedback on your artwork. Start today and level up your practice. If you learn something new, like and share this with a fellow art nerd. If you love receiving quality and free arts education, subscribe. Here's a couple other videos you can check out next.